This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. So we all be is under the have on Sister Cassie uh, to talk about a very important issue, uh, something that's been uh, unresolved for decades now, the uh, murder or the lynching of Isidore Banks, a wealthy landowner, black landowner in Arkansas back in the 1950s. He was found lynched and uh, his murder remains unsolved and his land has been gone from the family for the, so many years. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I, I wish I was here under different circumstances. I understand that. So can you uh, introduce yourself to our audience for us and let, let us know your background and why you uh, are here? All right. Um, it says I'm Cassie, but that's short for Cassandra. Uh, my maiden name's Bretherick, and my family's been in this county for over 100 years. And unfortunately, a part of the system that led to Isidore's lynching. And as a child, hearing some of those stories just made me sick to my stomach. I'd leave the room. And it was not till this past July that a friend showed me the article and just connected that that was who they were talking about all those years ago. So what do people need to know about me? Isdor Banks was a, was a black man. Who owned a lot of land? How, how much land he owned? Like a thousand acres or two thousand acres of land in Marion, well, Arkansas. Yes, but that's the uh, problem. Was the people involved in his lynching also held the positions to destroy those records? So over the years, all the documentation um, to exactly know how much he owned. But you can tell from who benefited the land, that part of it, mm -hmm. it was a lot, a couple thousand acres. Wow. So so who were the people that benefited from the removal of Isdor Banks? Uh, well, unfortunately, they're all dead and gone, but uh, my family was involved in it, um, and we were related by uh, cousins to the sheriff at the time. Cecil Goodwin, and like I said, it, my great grandfather mm -hmm. farmed the, uh, managed the farm at Clarkdale. There was a lot of things that were going on prior to uh, '54 that summer. Uh, there was the turning of the old highway into Interstate 55, which mm -hmm. ran through a dominant part of his land. Um, he was a big in trying to bring electricity to his community and turn Clarkdale from a farming community into a township and then on into a city eventually. And the thing was that he wanted to benefit his people. And my family, along with the other ones in this county, wanted their cut. And when he didn't want to participate, they cut him on out. And also, and, my, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll go ahead. Now, also, uh, my understanding, he also created a, a cotton gin for black farmers or share, or sharecroppers or whatever. Yes. And uh, he, he, he was very, he was very ahead of of um the time as far as being predominant in the South, especially here. Um, 
And like I said, uh, even now, I'm not saying that race isn't a problem in our community here and wasn't, but the way they saw it was just like the era time of his lynching. Now, it's still the same head corrupt. Even they make the joke about the five families. I know a lot of people talk about that when you hear New York or something, but now your skin color doesn't matter as long as you take care of them. But if you cross them, they'll clip you somehow, some way. Charges, you'll go to jail, you might disappear. <laughs> so it, it is a long line of criminal activity with the most people, you know, at the high top, offices held involved. I mean, you can look at our local papers now talking about good old boy system and people getting fired and caught up that stuff's been going on in this county just in different forms over the last hundred plus years. So my understanding, like you, you related to Sheriff Godwin, the late Sheriff Godwin. <laughs> yes, he was my grandfather's cousin. His so you, uh, mm -hmm. Sheriff Godwin's uh, a good one, excuse me, she's good one. Good Sheriff one, Goodwin's okay. uh, mm -hmm. mother was a brethren. Okay, so Goodwin, so you, you're suggesting that Goodwin was involved in the lynching of uh, Isidore Banks? I, 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 ain't, I ain't suggesting, I know. I mean, um, there is a live witness, I and, and like I said, when I first read the article and in, in the uh, details of the actual murder to go back to family reunions, and that's sad that this was talked about at family reunions. Mm -hmm. Like I told the, and I took two days to stomach it myself. And when I called the feds, I mean, I, there's a live witness that can verify parts of my story of mm -hmm. uh, how it was just talked about and some of the ones that were involved. But when you have the sheriff and the prosecutor of the time, you know, and the farm and families and whoever still benefit from today. Think about my I read somewhere I heard on a podcast recently that Goodwin's uh, widow left like a lot of money to and a eight million church. dollars to the church. Yeah, eight million dollars. Money, okay. Right. The money, the money always goes back into the top of the family, just like when my uncle Sherman died. Fogelman mm -hmm. bought his house. It always circles back in somehow, some way. So how, how does the Fogelmans or the Fog uh, how do they relate to this story or connect to this story? Well, uh, Julian Fogelman was the prosecutor mm -hmm. at the time. And there was different tiers, you might say, to uh, getting Isidore lynched and out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you had those directly involved, like my uncle Sherman, uh, Fogelman's um, benefited, uh, Sheriff uh, Goodwin. It's the then you had the ones that helped him cover it up, where you know he was found at Carl Croom's farm, mm -hmm. uh, other predominant farmers. And, and ones that benefited and uh, like I told them in court, in court I've also been a victim of this system and a descendant of it and when they want if you want to know whose name was involved I find a building or a street in West Memphis or Marion named after one of them and even digging in, like I said, I started uh, doing a lot of uh, community work in mm -hmm. my neighborhood. And I, like I said, growing up in this family, in this county, knew the structure and the history of it. And dealing with one section of, you know, the corrupt family. And then uh, coming across the Isadora story and how that all fits. It's just as... I can't even explain it sometimes, but, um, and it all had to do with benefiting uh, money-wise with the new interstate, the expansion of Marion and West Memphis in this mm -hmm. county. And, and it's 
a shame, shameful. It, yeah, cause I know like the interesting. I mean, I'm thing, sorry. No, no, you go ahead. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I was saying about the interstate piece is really big because Eisenhower, that was a part of his presidential legacy, was building the interstate or the highway system for the country. So I can only imagine like the untold millions of dollars that were lost by Isidore Banks' family in that you know transaction, among other things. But you're telling me basically that the the government was involved, the local government was involved in killing this man. Like it's like a state sponsored assassination. Yeah. Um... I mean, if you think about the positions they held and again, other things uh, is in my family got us to the point that we were kind of my branch of it was shunned to where we are. That's what I, how I think about it. Mm -hmm. um, but no one could ever tell me that I was poor growing up and I traveled the country with my grandparents. They raised me. And a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm not old enough to remember, but I wasn't raised by the generation of my father and my mother. Mm -hmm. I was raised by my grandparents. So I was around the generation that actually was involved in his murder. Heard the stories about the first, it was supposed to have happened in front of the courthouse. There's a tree there that they called the lynching tree. Mm -hmm. wow. But Mr. Banks was a large man. Uh, my uncle Sherman and Cecil, and I don't know who the third one was there, couldn't handle it. It went awry, and that's how he ended up at Carl Kroon's farm. They and, actually had him in the, in the middle of the city, in the courthouse section of the yeah. city. They were trying to do him there. He was actually there, and they moved him yeah. to the farm. Oh, wow, okay. And like I said, who's going to investigate it when the sheriff is right there with them, you know? And Was he, was he dead Washington. before they moved him from the uh, city to the farm? Yeah. Farm? He was already dead, but they killed him in the city. Or yeah. The town. At the wow. air, right there, in, right there, you know, in the front of the courthouse. I mean, how did they kill him? What did they use? I mean, what did they do? Well, like I said, they, tried, they were going to hang him and he fought mm -hmm. and uh, they shot him. Uh, because, like I said, he three against he was big, and I, I can imagine fighting for your life mm -hmm. against people you knew. Mm. But I, I see it every day, even now. So, um, and they shot him, and of course, how would you going to explain that? Um, so they moved him, and then they tried to burn him to cover it up. Mm. And this is the sheriff involved, along you know the other people who were the other people involved. It was three people, right? Sheriff Goodwin and who else? My uncle Sherman. Okay, and who's the third person? I know Julia. I don't see this is the thing. I don't know who the third one was there that he was fighting. But once the cover up came to moving in, that mm. involved more people. And then of course, uh, I said. My family, there was the Crowder, Nelson Crowder, and Cy Bonds. And you have to understand that those times, kind of like you had arranged marriages, you know, mm -hmm. is married. So all these people, even, I, like I said, maybe are the different tiers of who is the three there versus the seven to help him move him to Carl Kroon's farm and cover all that up as best they could to no one. Like, I know all his brothers and sisters and their husbands through the years and just their knowledge of it benefited somehow. You know, Cy Bond, Bond Engineering. Mm. You had uh, Jack uh, Rich with the construction company in West Memphis. I mean, they all benefited somehow through the generations of it. And the Fogelmans uh, benefited farmland wise. My Uncle Sherman got a section of land, a uh, side bond. And even now, those have been turned into subdivisions. That, um, sorry, yeah. that, uh, 
I want to say the least expensive house, maybe two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. And uh, then you look at who built them. You see where I'm going? Mm-hmm. You got to have a construction company. All right. So. Wow. That's a lot to process there. Uh, so it's and like I said, I, yeah. they think I'm crazy, but like I said, there's a witness. He was 16 at the time, still alive today, and will, you know, confirm about the stories talked about the local park store. So, and who was involved? Were there any like uh, black people, local blacks involved in this uh, conspiracy? And not that I they ever talked about. Like I said, when these were discussions at family reunions. Wow. And also being raised by my grandparents and knowing how they felt. I mean, they used the N word all the time. Mm-hmm. And I never understood it because my grandfather had workers uh, that helped him. And they'd always call him Mr. T.E. And then he'd call him that. And I was like, that, that is so ugly. Why do you do that? Mm-hmm. I was always different from the rest of them. And my, my, didn't live with my father because I couldn't have seen his. Tried to beat the conformity of that family into me. And mm-hmm. I, I was just always different. And... I said it's hard to discuss how it still today. Yeah, so you see, they called him Mr. T.E.? Yeah, my grandfather's name was T.E. Okay, okay. And they always called him Mr. T.E. I told him his black workers, right? Mm-hmm. As, okay. His name was Udi. He, U- he passed Udi. 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 He, okay. he used to tell an embarrassing story about me from my childhood. And, mm-hmm. Um, he was a victim of the system and uh, had a heart attack in the jail, and they didn't call any help for him. Wow. He died over there. Wow. So they, they'll kill you all types of ways, not just in Arkansas, but I guess in the system in general. But I also uh, heard that Isidore Banks had $93,000 in the bank, and it went missing after he died. You know anything about that? <laughs> well, I wish I knew what bank, because I know <laughs> what bank we deal with now. Mm-hmm. And And see, at the time, Cecil, not only being sheriff, he was also the tax collector, holder of the mm-hmm. tax records, the property records. So, I mean, you know, we just killed this man. Let's just tear some pages in a race here. And then over the years, if they, you know, missed the book, a little strange. I mean, the courthouse has problems, but I can't tell you how many damage, water damage books that would be so beneficial today to find out what land he really owned. So you think it was by design to destroy the, the books with the property? Yeah, well, see, uh, my grandmother, God rest her soul, was a legal secretary and mm-hmm. she was a national legal secretary. And she worked for a couple of the top lawyers here. So I understand how, again, Julian Fogelman at the time the prosecutor was involved, how other predominant people kept their mouth shut because they benefited. And she, uh, I said, working for those gave me the insight on how to search records and the legal things that I know today. And again, another section of the involvement of Mr. Banks. Lynching. Well, yeah, they say follow the money on the money trail, the paper trail, right? There you go. Oh, I got actually like you know you talked about the five families, think about the mafia, and I heard that there's a Italian community. I heard that some Italians were involved in the in the lynching of Isidore Banks. Do you can you verify if that's true or not? Yes, it is. And okay. uh again, again, they're all deceased. Mm-hmm. And the ways that benefited farmland, uh, the predominant, um, Adolf Prani uh, graduated with my grandfather and their involvement in looking at part of their farmlands. And one of the benefits in it was when my grandfather rented a section of farmland 
mm-hmm. from Adolf. You know, we got to put something on the record. So a hundred dollars a year, and that's where he had his uh, dump trucking business, and a hundred dollars a year for a rent of a section of farmland. Mm. One hand washes the other. Now, did Isto have any business deals, like land deals with some of the Italians? Like, I already had an Italian widow he was doing a business with as far as leasing her land or something like that. Are you familiar with that? I I don't know. Now, I do know that there are some reporters from uh, Northeastern University. Mm -hmm. I spoke with them. They did a lot of research um, as far as more into that there's people in this county that know and i promise you they told me i could hear a pin drop when i announced that i knew it in quorum court to all those elected officials and some of those mm-hmm. they know there's people in this town that know but mm-hmm. i mean how much money he had you'll never get that answer but i, I do like, know yeah. Like what it what their land is worth now. I, you can even go. Well, I think we have one of the best uh, county records so far that I've come across. Go to, to their website, and you can just touch parcels. But when the history, it'll say 1910, but that's not a true accurate. They only go back to the 60s. You know, d- during that time of cover up and books coming up missing. Right. But you can see the subdivision that my uncle Sherman had, and look at the price of those houses and the acreage. Same thing with River Trace and Cybonds. It's worth, like I said, millions of dollars now. I know it is though, Banks, when he was alive, from what I researched, that he would try to pay the taxes to Goodwin, and then they'd say he was delinquent or something like that. And just, I mean, it's a little bit of tax money. You know, he got the head the money. But that's how they were taking not on his land, but also other black land on this land. Exactly. And then after they lynched him, um, his widow tried to go and pay the taxes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, tearing out pages and stuff. So. Wow. So you're trying to figure out how can a retired school teacher and a sheriff leave you know, millions of dollars behind uh, to a church without doing anything extra outside of what they've done as far as their career professions. So, I, so basically, like Northeastern, I'm familiar with them being involved. So, did you tell them all the stuff that you're telling me now about who were involved, the people who benefited from? Yes, and yes. as far as I know, the FBI didn't even call my witness to even or show up to question them. And like I said, I've been dealing with a, another branch of this uh, mob style family. Mm-hmm. So I, call him Al Capone and he gets mad, but I don't <laughs> care. Um, if you act like it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I apologize to Al Capone's family, but um, and to the point that when I called Washington, D.C. headquarters of the FBI, mm-hmm. and this isn't my first time trying to call them. I've been making calls to them since 2013 over the corruption in this county. Mm -hmm. Um, I even insinuated to the headquarters in Washington that maybe one of theirs here is compromised. Mm. She didn't like that very much, but if Mm -hmm. the shoe fit, I mean, mean, they got a history of that in the FBI. (laughs) Yeah, don't get me wrong. I mean, because of not just the knowledge I have of Isidore Banks, Mm -hmm. but the other stuff going on, Mm -hmm. I even called. Uh, the FBI in St. Louis and told a a guy who dealt there in corruption of government, please, if somebody reaches you and says something has happened to me, I want somebody outside this state, you know, Mm -hmm. to call an FBI guy in St. Louis because Mm -hmm. that's how bad it is here. Mm -hmm. I mean, Blake Woods went missing for three years. And Wapanaka. Oh, well, he was just a drug addict. No, he knew things about corrupt police or whoever. And like I said, it's not just 1954 lynchings. Mm -hmm. You know, they can get rid of you now. 
Yeah, Arkansas is a very gangster state. Y'all got an interest in history. I mean, you talk about Al Capone with Hot Springs with our vacation. That's where they caught Lucky Blue Channel at when he's on the run in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Then the only Madden, the guy who ran the Cotton Club, came down to Hot Springs and ran Hot Springs for decades. And that's where Bill Clinton's from. I know he's from Hopefully. He was raised in Hot Springs. So, and you got Mina, Arkansas. He was governor, right? The drug trafficking in Mina, Arkansas. And the lame race massacre. They could a whole bunch of black sharecroppers and stuff like that back in 1919 with the blessing of the governor from Mississippi, who was from Mississippi, the governor at the time. So, I mean, like, yeah, y'all got a very, it's a very gangster. I can try, I can track. I can track some stuff into Memphis currently. Uh, I got so much trying to uncover here. Yeah. And the little tidbits in Memphis. I can't I, I got leads in Mississippi and Florida. Mm -hmm. Um if I really dig in, uh even Robert Cridden, who this county is named after, when he was appointed back when we were just a territory. Mm -hmm. Someone challenged him as far as kind of like the elector or governor of the territory right. or whatever they called it at that time. Mm -hmm. He challenged him to a duel and shoot him uh, to take out his so. political <laughs> opponent. So right. even the name of this county is based on, and, and people joke now sitting in the courtroom going, Crooked County. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the 1800s. Wow. Well, yeah, that's something that's not the process there. <laughs> like what what well, party said you can you can pick up the last two uh evening times editions and uh at least the last two months and see nothing but good old boy corruption crumbling. Yeah. I love it. I really well, do. <laughs> well that was the political affiliation of of, of Goodwin and Fogerman when what their party affiliation? Did they have one? Oh, I don't know. I mean my grandparents were Democrat. <laughs> I feel like yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean even now, that really don't matter here, and 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 to some of the point of your skin color now doesn't matter, mm -hmm. as long as you can feel their needs to mm -hmm. benefit the money and the power. Yeah, it's about money and the power always. It's politics. And I'll ask you about this case you told me about uh, the Anderson teenager who was shot. It was Lynch, Andrew Lee Anderson. Anderson. In the yeah. What you doing about that case? Well, family reunions. Uh, okay. You know. Oh, God. You know, this, like, I ain't going to have to just worry about them. I'm going to have to worry about members of my own family showing up yeah. to take me. But my Uncle Richard, my grand, my dad's brother, my grandfather's other son, uh, was supposed to have shot him. Um, at the time, they lived in West Memphis on Barton, mm -hmm. Ice House. And at that time, again, of course, as things advance, uh, not sure if Cecil was sick at that time and it had already passed. So, therefore, you know, that guy's gone. You got to have somebody else. Well, that's how they ended up here. And where I'm at now, Lakeshore. Uh, my grandfather went to work for Cy Bond, who was a family member by marriage, uh, Bond Engineering, to the development of this, which, um, again, with family records, I don't know in that photo I sent you mm -hmm. of the construction of I-55, mm -hmm. that was the farm here. But they redeveloped it into the community I have today. Um but it took my dad and his brothers out of the West Memphis School District into Marion. Mm -hmm. And when he shot Anderson, they took him to the jail, which at that time was behind the courthouse. Mm. And left him there till he bled out. Um, they didn't get, you know... There, there's there rumors about he was trying to or assault a younger woman, girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't. That wasn't true. That part of it wasn't true. What caused it at that time? Show your um, loyalty to the family. <laughs> mm. I, 
is so like I said, I couldn't yeah. wish my lifetime as good memories as I had the bad ones to anybody to know what I know. Yeah. So that was Andrew I mean, Lee Anderson. Anderson. Okay. Yeah. And they accused him of trying to rape an eight-year-old white girl. And he was like cutting grass right. or something like that, right? He was doing landscaping or something like that over right. there. Right, that wasn't true, right. Okay. So there's just a couple. You said your cousin actually killed him or shot him. No, my Uncle Richard. Your Uncle Richard? My dad's oh. brother was the one that they always talked about shotting. Wow. And like I said, they uh, instead of taking him to the hospital or getting him medical, I mean, I don't know at that time we did have mm -hmm. uh, doctors in the area, but they took him to the jail and let him bleed out. So but it was a murder, right? It was undercover law. Okay. Wow. That's that's crazy. I know I heard a podcast with some of his sisters on it, and they was like, you know. They didn't blame the little girl or anybody like that. They just wanted to know what happened. And it really affected their family. They impacted. It's like Isdor Banks getting killed or lynched. That took generational wealth out of his family hands. I mean, they all got scattered across the country and stuff. Uh, his little daughter, I interviewed uh, one of his kids. She went to St. Louis. He sent her up there with her mom. She ended up getting the foster care come on. Had like a massive heart attack or something like that. So they broke up the family. But like, what what can be done by you know sharing all this information? What, what do you think should come out of this? So, well, but I've always been different, and mm -hmm. I have you know other. Like I said, one, I hope it helps with the justice system problems we're having in this, not just here, right, in this whole entire country. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always been different from the rest of my family. I've always been a protester, activist, spoke my mind when I should have kept my mouth shut. Mm, I, that. And, uh, I got that problem too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh -huh. when this happened with George Floyd, mm -hmm. I remember sitting and having those conversations with my grandfather back watching Rodney King get beat. Mm -hmm. And then knowing what I knew about my father who worked for the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. um, he got his karma and did two and a half years in the federal pen. Mm -hmm. uh, Cecil, just other officers that I know through the years that may not have been directly involved in something, but just, I'm sorry, turning an eye to when you hold that badge and that oath, the hypocrisy. And when George Floyd happens, and like I said, thinking about Rodney King and how damn near 70 years. Yeah. That, I mean, in some way, it's progress, but in others, it ain't changed. They just find new people to feel in for them. And like I said, even today, you can look in it. Skin color may matter in some situations, but if you can feel their need, they're going to take it. And it's wow. sad. It is sad. <laughs> uh, that is something like, so you have not been approached by anybody. I know you say you reached out to the FBI three times or to the Department of Justice three times. I, I seen a message. No. Mm -mm. So, uh, well, anyway, and like I said, I've been calling about other stuff to the feds mm -hmm. for since 2013 with a dirty cop, right. and he returned a call. So, tell me something ain't compromised in this county, yeah. this state. Hmm. Well, you know, there's the old saying behind every uh, great wealth is a great crime, right? <laughs> So, I mean, it's the land grab. So, you said I 55 who I ride through Arkansas to get to St. Louis or whatever. That's part of Isdor Banks' land, or was part of Isdor Banks' land. Mm -hmm. so, wow. So, yeah. it's, so, I mean, I, so you said this has been like talked about at family reunions, this, this lynching of Isdor Banks for, for years, right? They talked about this openly. But, yes. un, but officially, it's unsolved. Yes. Officially, so, I, but everybody is an open secret. Everybody know basically what happened. The the characters were involved. Was your uncle Richard involved in that too? I'm I'm trying. To, I know you no. said he wasn't involved, but okay. But see, but Sheriff Goodwin he was, wasn't. He he was. He's probably 
say 40. My dad was born in 45, so he mm. would have been born in like 48. So he would have right, been that, he that, that old. <laughs> right, okay, and, they, and see, my grandfather um, was in Louisiana working for the Corps of Engineers at the time. But like mm. I said, his brother, Sherman, um, excuse me, his cousin, Cecil. Um, yeah, you said that your, 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 your grandfather's brother. That's what you said, Sherman, right? Yes. Yeah. He I was, was involved, <laughs> and then Cecil Goodwin. You couldn't remember who the third guy was okay. And I, with my grand great grandfather James, could he have been the third guy? I don't know. And also, other stressors were going on. You know, my great grandmother had just died at that time. Mm -hmm. She died in May of that same year. What it, you know? Well, well, he probably's going. What else do I got to live for? You know, right. uh, count me in or something. I mean, it's just, but it's it is. It's like an open secret. People know, and it's just time for all these secrets to come out. It's time for a change in the, how the system and the complaints t towards these people are set up. Mm -hmm. And and I you know I always believe that justice prevails <laughs> somehow somewhat. Yeah, I guess maybe some poetic justice somewhere in this. So are you you currently living on land that was once owned by Isdor Banks? Is that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. So all that land, <laughs> millions of dollars worth of development, like you said, with the wow. well, mine ain't worth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Back up. Let me show you my uh -huh. hood. My hood ain't worth. <laughs> I'm in the low section. Uh -huh. I was in the low section. Okay. But I don't get me wrong. We. We always talk about the, the spirits of this land and not just before Isidore, you know, right, right. trail of tears with the Indians runs through here. Yeah. It, it, and people always don't understand why I'm grounded to this land. This land mm -hmm. means something to me, even the good and the bad. Right, right. And yeah, but I'm sitting on what's, what was owned by him. Okay, so you ever talked to any of his relatives by any chance or ran across any one of his relatives? No, like I said, uh, this is something recent and uh, trying to do the right thing before I just went on, you know, shows, broadcasts, and I contacted the authorities. Uh, like I said, they called me back. I gave them my other witness and they never heard, heard from them. But um, uh I'm sorry. I, it's just that's right. That's right. They, I don't know, because like I said, if they start digging in one, they're going to find the rest of all the skeletons in this county. That's probably why they don't want to dig. They don't want to look. You know, they don't really want to do that. Yeah. And I and see, and and I'm just, you know, I can't even tell you what they call me uh, around here, but the trailer trash, you know, yeah. the crazy lady. Uh. And that's because I'm not scared to say to their face what I know. They don't understand how I can dig in records, but thanks to my grandmother and her knowledge of teaching me. Mm -hmm. um, but what I hope for is something to change. And I just, I don't know. I don't know if one person can, can make a difference, but I'm trying. Oh, and I'm taking my whole community. <laughs> Yeah, you, you're doing a great job. I think, like, you know, George Orwell said to tell the truth is a revolutionary act. So what you're doing is very revolutionary and also very courageous to do so. But everybody you know, tells me, but everybody tells me, even I did one other uh, local interview um, about meeting is their family. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's not up to me. It's up to them because I wouldn't know how I would feel to meet somebody who killed family member who killed my family. Right. And I don't want to impose on an, another heartache or hardship, but I would uh, welcome if they wanted to me uh, sit down and talk mm -hmm. and a few people have mentioned it, but no one's ever followed through or they say, no, I don't want to meet her. You know, I don't know. Well, I I know someone like I said I interviewed uh, his daughter who was like I guess either four or five when she was sent to St. Louis with her mom, and I, I interviewed his granddaughter and she's really been the one that's been an advocate. She's kind of like even your position, like you know she's the one that 
you know, I guess uh, she just speaks well, her maybe mind. we'll reach out. Granddaughter yeah, I we'll to get granddaughter. Along. Yeah, I, I want to connect y'all, actually. I'm going to connect y'all. But I'm saying she, y'all got the same type of spirit. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all the ones. If it wasn't for y'all, things would not be known about. Things may not be getting done. So I definitely want to connect you both. Um, but I, I just think that it, it, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, people don't want to talk about what needs to be talked about. And they, they place a premium on things that's not worth talking about. Like, we you know, we uh-huh. into celebrity gossip and all that crap. And we're not talking about things like this. Keeping and, up um, with the Kardashians, right? Right, right. That's yeah. that. they, they show, but I'm saying, but like, it's bread and circuses, right? You know, everybody's distracted. Uh-huh. There's a lot of real stuff is going on and going down. Real world, real world mess. Can I say mess on here? Yeah, yeah, you good, you good, you good, you good. Uh, yeah, I mean, stuff that we, I mean, people in positions say that they, oh, I came from, you know, a, a bad background or, right. and but I think once they reach a certain power of money, they, they really forget right. that root that, you know, took them where they were mm. to get out. And like I said, I, there's been times I could have left this community, but. I'm not. I'm not gonna take my tail and run like everybody else did. Well, we need folks that are gonna stay behind and fight the good fight like yourself. So I'm, I'm very grateful that you chose that stance. And it's very important. Uh, I guess. Oh yeah. Do you have anything else you want to add pertaining to anything or anything you like to address? No. Uh, well, can I do some? Uh, anyway, I like to say yes. happy birthday to my grandson Lane. He's in Florida. Okay. And. My other grandson in a landing in Florida, he turns oh 13 in two weeks. So right. that's beautiful. That's Happy excellent. birthday, boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, yo, know, that's good. They got grandma's love. You got people that love you out here and want to see you hey, do well. And you setting a great example for your grandchildren. I know that much. You said I'm great trying. Are you doing it by just being an honest person, being ethical? And it's very important. And if like um, any of your followers, watchers, uh, I do have a Lakeshore Community Improvement Group page. Okay. Uh, I just like and share, just like I said, to get our story out there. And watch for me on the news because I'm about to uh, file a complaint uh, with the Supreme Court of Arkansas. So. Oh, right. You're right. You know what? Is, is this Columbus Day we doing this on? Is this Columbus Day? Is it Columbus Day? Yeah, is it land grab day? So it's funny how you talk about, you know, the I land. I mean, that's why the mail. Is, <laughs> look, I've been looking for the mail lady all day. It's Columbus, it's Columbus day. day. I think it's Columbus Day. But, you know, think about the fact well, how this country was started by land grab. Like you said, the people live. There's a lot of trail of tears around the country right now. And it's, I, I exactly. think it's the season that we're going to reap. It's going to be, a you know, for some going to be good, and, for some going to be bad. You know, it is what and it is. Honestly, a lot of my uh, heritage comes from England, Scotland, like back in that stuff. But mm-hmm. my mom's from New Zealand. And like uh, I wanted to add, the, you know, I always had this thing about thought that she was too dark complected. But right. so I, I've got that side of my family who's multiracial. Mm-hmm. And in this day and age, I just don't see how anybody can say they're this. I got questioned by Medicare yesterday about my heritage race. Yeah. Who in this day and age can say that they're, I ain't a German shepherd purebred, you know? <laughs> right. We all mutts in some way. And, yeah. for, you know, I, I, I just can't stand that. Well, you know, if I'm white or I'm this, we're all something. Yeah. I mean, you look we're like, I, you look like you could be, uh, I don't know. I, I got people in my family who like you. So, I, so you know, I, I think I think I've been you know, called light skin. Yeah. I think you've been called light skin sometimes, but uh-huh. I identify with Pacific Islander. Yeah. Uh, I identify with my mother's heritage more than mm-hmm. my shameful own past. But, I mean, I, I don't even like that when they ask you, you know, your age or your race. Why right, is it, why it, is it yeah. so important? Oh, fill out the census. Right. Why? Count people, but why do you need to know how many whites there are, how many blacks, how many Asians? Why in 2020 is all that still necessary? Because somebody got to be at the bottom. For what? You got to have somebody at the bottom. Somebody got to be at the bottom. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's how they But if it. you did, I mean, 
Like my neighborhood's full of everybody. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I get counting people. We want to know there's, you know, 7,000 people here, but right. why is it so important to know what their race is? Because mutt is not listed on there. <laughs> <laughs> It's very so, confusing, but now nah, I appreciate you, Sister Kasi, for doing what you're doing. So you said people can reach out to you on Facebook at the Lakeshore Community Drive Community page. Improvement Group. I mean, so Lake say it again. Com- Lakeshore Community Improvement Group. Okay, cool. So like, that, yeah, they'll do it, and I, I look forward to talking to you again. I know we'll talk again, and I'll Anytime. connect you with some of the people in the, in the Isdor Banks family who be open I would love talking. It. Yeah, and hopefully the justice will be done because I know. Well, I got a lot of hope for is people, your grandkids age or people in their 20s right now. They really want things to be right. A lot of them do. You know, they really want the truth to come out about things. They they are tired of being lied to and being misled. And hopefully, um, like I said, I, I, people come across stuff like this all the time and they reach out to me. I mean, I, I people from college and stuff like that who really benefit from learning this information. I think it's time for this to come out right now. This is the perfect season for it. It is. 2020 is like, uh, I don't know, karma cleaning or something. It is. I mean, <laughs> it's very much hindsight. It's, just, it's, a, it's like the, the, the greatest reality TV show in history, 2020. It's like a horror movie, too, though. It could be like a horror movie. I don't know, like, exactly. I don't know what happened next. This is weird. Well, I it's hope Jason strange. don't I hope Jason don't jump out the shed with the machine. <laughs> I, hope, I hope not either. But you know why? I told somebody, I said, whoever makes it out of 2020, they'll live in legend to me. Because you can survive 2020, you can survive anything. <laughs> this exactly. is a, it doesn't play favorites. I know this is crazy. So thank you, Sister Cassie, for all you do and for taking time out your schedule to talk to us about a very important issue and about the late, great Isidore Banks. In the words of Duke Elton, we love you madly. You keep on producing this. Love you yeah, we'll be talking soon. Okay, thank you. Wow. <laughs> and that does it for this edition of We All Be. And remember, like I said, in the words of the great Duke Ellington, we love you madly. One love. This is Brother Ron. I am asking you all to do me a big favor. Think about supporting the We All Be movement. Your donation is tax deductible. The We All Be Group Incorporated is a recognized 501c3. And I'm just asking you all because I want to keep on bringing y'all quality work uh, through the way that I know how to do best. And uh, I'm going to sing my praises and toot my horn. A lot of y'all were not hip to Dick Gregory until Brother Ron brought him on the We All Be platform, until that Django review we did. Y'all seen another side of Judge Joe Brown, and Judge Joe Brown's message has been amplified. But it was We All Be that brought Judge Joe Brown to y'all back in 2014. And so many others, and we covered so many things. So help us out so we can help you all. Peace.